There's a couple of uh, big news topics that have hit over the past couple of days. The most important one is the fact that Dragon Ball is looking to be more and more difficult as a viable competitive fighting game unless it is uh, being managed directly by Bandai, Bandai Namco. Because they do have their own Dragon Ball circuit, like they have the Dragon Ball World Tour, and that's about to actually come to a conclusion. Uh, not to mention the fact that Jump Fiesta is, is like this weekend, and there's going to be uh, a new announcement of some kind. They said there was going to be a Dragon Ball Fighters trailer. Uh, so that's cool. There's more stuff happening. I And I know a lot of people have, have constantly been asking me, uh, like, where's Dragon Ball? Why haven't you been playing it? There's been a lot of fighting games and a lot of games that I have been playing over the past couple of months. Um, the last time I played the game a lot was after Cooler came out, and I really enjoyed Cooler and spent a lot of time with Android 17 because I loved the combos. And that's the thing I love about Dragon Ball the most, the most is the... The core gameplay, like the combo system and figuring out team dynamics, is some of the most fun. It's like, genuinely, I I love that shit, and it was the reason I could play Ultimate Marvel 3 in training mode forever. Like, I feel like I could play that forever. But, uh, Super Dash, man. Super Dash and dealing with that in neutral and so that the way that interrupts the neutral is easily one of the most frustrating things I've dealt with in fighting games in some time, much less dealing with the the crazy insanity of Marvel 3. It, it's so funny how my relationship with Dragon Ball Fighters is almost the exact same as my relationship with Ultimate Marvel 3, where I love these games. It's just that playing them online hurts. Like, it fills me with anxiety having to play them online. So, uh, they did do some stuff already to Super Dash, where they were trying to adjust it, but many people have played it since then, saying it kind of is better. Uh, I think the thing I want the most, before we get into, like, the main topic about Dragon Ball's competitive future, uh, I think the thing I want the most is for them to slow down Super Dash in neutral. Like, if they just give it five frames more startup in neutral, leave it the same in combos. If it's during hit stun, block stun, you know, just leave it the same. That's fine. Uh, it's just that people just throw it out, and it's almost impossible to react to someone if they're mid-screen. Like, it happens in, like, less than 14 frames, it feels like. And if they're online, that's even more difficult. So, I would just love for that to be adjusted. And if there is a trailer, if there's going to be something announced for Dragon Ball Fighters in the near future, then I hope it's more than just characters. I hope they, they take the usual Arc System Works route with it, and they they do big system updates, because they have done that for Guilty Gear XR, they've done that for Blaze Blue. It isn't usually just characters, they sort of they sort of massage, you know, massage the mold of the game to try to make it a better experience. And Dragon Ball's still kind of in its, you know, vanilla sort of version of the game, even though it has been patched a lot, so... That's the thing that's been sort of deterring me, because... I feel like I, I get so stressed out and so much anxiety just dealing with people super dashing in on you, and much less me doing it to people and not being satisfied up with it, just the same way it was with X Factor in previous games. The reason I'm talking about this is because Dragon Ball's in the news like crazy, because Toei has been acting really funny with Dragon Ball as a property for quite some time. And I don't even think this is to blame with Bandai Namco, or Arc System Works especially, because they're mostly the guys making the game. Bandai Namco is publishing, and then we have Arc System Works being the developer. And while I have my issues, and I hope those guys take care of it within gameplay, the big problem with the game is that it is becoming increasingly difficult to have Dragon Ball fighters at your competitive event to actually host a competitive event with the game, even involved. And we've seen, once again, another tournament uh, be declined access to use the game as a highlight game, or like a main game in, in the tourney. And this already popped up, I'd say about June last year, where the, uh, the Machinima guys that run big fighting game tournaments, um, the body count fighting guys, were running like big spectacle events, and they were including Dragon Ball, and they suddenly couldn't. Like, you're, you're not allowed to run this game. And then after that, it was more and more and more stuff that there seemed to be popping up that Dragon Ball couldn't be a part of. And the big one, I believe, was Evo Japan recently. And like, Evo, yeah, DreamHack, Evo Japan. Now, uh, I think it's Anime Ascension is what it's called. An increasing amount of big scale tournaments are unable to host Dragon Ball, which is, almost entirely going back to licensing issues where these guys that own that own the license rights to Dragon Ball Toei, they, they're notoriously difficult to work with. 
And we don't know if that's going to come around to content creation. We don't know if it's going to actually hit people that make Dragon Ball videos. I don't think so because there's a... I mean, I've I've been alongside Rhyme Style in many other accords, and he's like a Dragon Ball associated like streamer slash like YouTuber, and he's been doing this stuff for years. I don't think they're gonna go after those guys because there's so many Dragon Ball games. You're not gonna you just take away content creation. I don't think it'll affect us, but it's the people that are competitively getting into Dragon Ball, hoping it becomes a bigger esport. Uh, and this is not new. Like this actually happened with Smash Brothers back in 2012, 2013 when Melee was starting to become a big part of EVO once again. And Nintendo kind of stepped in and was like, no, you can't do that, as soon as they announced it. But it worked itself out, and I can only hope that's what happens now, because I feel kind of bad for Bandai Namco, because they put a lot of time into making Dragon Ball like a big competitive thing, and uh, much less Arc System Works, who have put a lot of work and effort and time into making this their big first, like, giant... 3v3 tag team game in the vein of a Marvel vs. Capcom. And they killed it. Like, the game sold incredibly well and had a great showing at EVO. It's... And it's at this point where it all could be immediately threatened because of the people that own the rights to Dragon Ball characters. So, we'll see what happens. I hope for the best, but I think it, it sucks. Like, it is the worst case scenario for anyone that is competitively into Dragon Ball right now because... At the moment, and even the guys that run Evil, like Evo, Joey, and, and Markman, like they're they're talking on Twitter, sort of mentioning that well, Dragon Ball might have been a one and done sort of scenario, and since it it's not showing up at Evo Japan, there's a, it's looking like Dragon Ball might not be showing up at Evo this year. Uh, if it's if if we're going by what they're saying right now, the people that actually run these events, there's there's a chance that might actually happen. So. I think it really sucks for 3v3 fighting games because, uh, especially like big tag team games, Blaze Blue Cross Tag has probably been in a, a good state for all of them, but it's not like a huge, gigantic game. It's it's for a niche audience, but the big ones, the Marvel vs. Capcoms and now the Dragon Ball Fighters, have all sort of uh, run into big issues and they mostly boil down to licensing reasons, and that's largely the reason why Marvel Infinite didn't even get a chance to show up at, at EVO, was seemingly licensing issues. Um, so I only hope that that can get figured out, because it's very not homegrown feeling. Like, the FGC is already in a state now where it feels very esports dominated and very controlled, and that's definitely not the arcade feel that we know back in the day, and Dragon Ball being put into this situation is exactly that so I hope I hope it gets figured out because I, I like watching competitive Dragon Ball I don't like playing the game competitively because it stresses me the hell out but I love watching other people get stressed out it's exactly my feelings that I had playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3 kind of funny